Good afternoon, everyone. I'm back with more uh, serious uh, discussions on sexually transmitted infections. You are welcome to send me questions if you have any on any of the STDs or symptoms or anything that worries you. I'm at work today and uh, as we provide only essential services at this time, I was seeing patients with abnormal uterine bleeding, vaginal discharge, uh, some girls who are worried about sexually transmitted infections, in fact, also a few of my post-operative patients uh, for a follow-up and to check and answer whatever questions they might have following the procedures which uh, were done before lockdown. Today I will be talking about chlamydia. Chlamydia is a very common sexually transmitted infection and it's most common in young people for no reason but uh, the fact that younger people engage into unprotected sex more commonly. They um, sometimes or lots of the times don't use protection. Uh, at times there is recreative drugs, alcohol involved, uh, which uh, puts uh, risk further on uh, up and uh, we forget about simple things as a condoms and chlamydia comes. So how does one get chlamydia? You get chlamydia from sex any sex. It can be oral sex, it can be anal sex, it can be vaginal sex. When there is an exchange of fluids, chlamydia can be transmitted. Uh, it is easily transmittable if the partner does it, does have it. And condoms protect against chlamydia. How does one know that they have an infection? When Lots of people have no symptoms. Men and women might carry chlamydia and not know that they have it. So it's quite important to be tested um, when you have multiple partners or you start relationship with a new partner before you engage into sexual activity. It's important to have a test to know that you don't have this bug. People who have symptoms when they get chlamydia would feel discharge burning in the vagina or burning in the penis, discharge from the penis. They might feel even in, for example, in men, uh, swollen testicles. Women at times, not commonly, may develop a pelvic inflammatory disease or PID, which would be associated with pain and discomfort if they have chlamydia. If chlamydia is left untreated, <clears throat> it can lead to infertility or issues falling pregnant. It may lead to, uh, if you are, for example, pregnant, to passing the bug, bacteria, this bacteria called chlamydia, to the baby <clears throat> and baby developing respiratory problems uh, or eye infection. So it's something that is best to be diagnosed and treated. How do we diagnose chlamydia? Chlamydia is diagnosed with a test that is uh, taken from the cervical um, mucus. So we take a swab from the cervix or from the vagina and in that sample we would pick up DNA of the or genetic material of the bacteria. Hence, you can imagine we only need a little bit of uh, fluid to be able to uh, diagnose the disease. In the past, people also used a blood test to pick up chlamydia, and there is a lot of conversations about antibody tests for COVID 19 to prove that one would have had infection. So for chlamydia, the blood test is actually not great. It has very poor sensitivity, specificity. It's terms that we use when we discuss tests. Basically, it's not a test that we would recommend nowadays because we will not know if you actually have the bacteria 
at this particular time, even if your blood test shows that you have antibodies. If you have chlamydia antibodies, it means that at certain time in your life you were exposed to it, you had the disease, but it doesn't mean that you actually have the bacteria now. So doing a urine test or vaginal swab test is the best for chlamydia. Once we detect that person has it, we would advise on a treatment, which is a pretty simple thing. How do we treat it with antibiotics? There is a couple of options in terms of antibiotics for chlamydia. It's very, very important to treat the partner. If we only treat the woman, you will re get reinfected again. So it's important to find out who you've had unprotected sex with in the last few months and have the treatment given to your partners as well. It could be a just single dose of antibiotic called azithromycin and that antibiotic uh, is just taken once, it's a couple of tablets. It has very good uh, efficacy so it would treat majority of people with the infection. We recommend not to have sex for a week after the treatment and to retest in three months after the treatment and obviously use protection until you retest. <laughs> Sometimes we use doxycycline for treatment and it's a course of a week and we advise not to uh, have sex or use protection for a week uh, of treatment with doxycycline. It's also quite effective but azithromycin showed a better efficacy in the treatment of chlamydia. And this treatment is for a simple infection which has got symptoms that have not led to pelvic inflammatory disease yet. If someone has PID or bad infection with fevers and pain, we would treat it differently and prescribe a longer course of antibiotics. Once again, we've discussed what happens to non-treated chlamydia, infertility, sometimes ectopic pregnancy or blocked tubes. So chlamydia is a bacteria that lives in the fallopian tubes. And here's my picture, I might be able to show you. So this is how fallopian tubes look. And if it gets through the vagina into cervix, it causes inflammation in the cervix, inflammation in the uterus, and can lead to destroying special tissue in the tubes that helps egg to move from the ovary into the uterus. If tubes are damaged and blocked, the embryo can come to the uterus and infertility is an issue or the embryo can get stuck in the tube and then ectopic pregnancy or pregnancy outside of the uterus becomes an issue. So it's important to treat this bacteria and it's not that complicated to do so. Thank you for listening. I hope you're all having a good day and goodbye.